Meet MR Barnabas of Collective Magpie. MR is an interdisciplinary artist who is dedicated to collaborative production in the public domain. She was born in Montreal to parents from Trinidad and Peru and grew up across North America. She holds a BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in painting, art and technology. She's conducted regional studies in Mexican art and craft at the Universidad de las Americas Puebla and holds an MFA in visual arts with a public culture focus from the University of California, San Diego. Today she will be sharing her ongoing art series called The Poetic Exploration of Race Survey. This survey originated working with community members from both sides of the border, highlighting how people experience race and ethnicity and how they are categorized by others. Enjoy. Thank you, Ozzy, for inviting me to share collective Magpie work. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all joining us and to thank AIA San Diego for supporting this panel for Design Week. I would also like to recognize my own 20-year art collaborator, Tay Huang, who is presently in Baltimore. To introduce our practice, Collective Magpie produces public-facing artworks through site and audience-specific participatory engagement, conducted in the form of murals, signage, performances, interventions, institutional critique, and other collaborative gestures. It is through collaboration with participants that nuanced perspectives are activated in the art production, ultimately to increase public discourse around representation and to establish precedents for increased hybridity wherever possible. This presentation will give context to the Who Designs Your Race series and its associated poetic exploration of race survey. This ongoing race survey project was initially created for folks here in the borderlands of San Diego, Tijuana, for us as a means to consider and render visible some ways which living in a binational zone affects our experiences of race and ethnicity differently than might be assumed. To start with a few projects that led to the development of the race survey, Collective Magpie's work with people on both sides of the border began initially with the project Globos 2014 to 2017. This project built hot air balloons to send over the US-Mexico border. We worked with hundreds of people with the support of two children's museums and many community organizations over the years. Pictured are broadsheets we created and wheat pasted in both cities and on the border wall itself announcing the project. Globos included participation from many socioeconomically divergent groups, from Bishop's Private School in La Jolla to the San Diego Monarch School dedicated to students impacted by homelessness, to the U.S. deported U.S. veteran safe house in Tijuana to visitors of the spectacular Tijuana Secut Cultural Center and many more. Elements that informed this process included its construction using the craft of monumental tissue paper Lobos de Cantoya with two years of our field research with artisans in Mexico City. Along with its historic relationship to the Japanese World War II Operation Fugo that consisted of a plan to bomb California using paper balloons assembled by school children. Those paper balloons transported explosives while ours were designed to carry a symmetry of sentiments. This image is of a completed balloon installed at the New Children's Museum. It is floating above a photo mural of the border wall extending into the ocean at Friendship Park. This tissue paper, glue and string technology contains the potential to extend beyond an individual's immigration status and circumnavigate the border. Globos was created to highlight the border and its semi-permeable reality as a human surrogate built in meaning and material by people a 20-minute car ride to the frontera. This project was also a call for the border's reimagining a process that was intentionally centered around the imagination of children. Although the balloons were produced through collective construction, in no way was this project meant to contain or encourage a singular perspective. Rather, it was meant to be a type of symbolic and material tether 
to us here across our region with very different but interrelated socioeconomic means and access all bound together. At the end, we felt that the most powerful part of the project remained invisible. These were the stories that people shared with us about their varied lived experiences as a direct result of the border. So we made a project that was expressly about collecting local experiences. We did that through the creation of experimental courses as guest lecturers at different local colleges. The courses were project-based studio efforts where students would interview each other and people they know here. Those conversations were transcribed, published, and bound as broadsheets that were designed to be pasted up throughout the cities. We even did one of these courses with Woodbury architecture students. When the border wall prototypes went up in 2017, the city of San Diego put a million dollars of its budget to prepare for the protests. But there were no significant protests here. Perhaps this was because much of the population incensed by the prototypes and who would have been inclined to protest couldn't make themselves visible in that manner due to being part of mixed immigration status families. Also, the site where the prototypes were installed was difficult to access and didn't allow reasonable space for holding a protest. So in this space where protest is risky, we were able to harness the protections of our institutional positions, as well as utilize the space of art making to engage in explicitly critical but non-confrontational protests. And we did this through the construction of a borderland street theater and busked about border policy in the densest tourist districts of our two cities. This image is a montage from a U.S. border wall prototype beauty pageant with the students in their paper mache wall costumes below the corresponding actual prototypes installed in Ote Mesa. With their bodies, we could relocate the prototypes into visible spaces for discussion as was the sharing our range of experiences and observations with U.S. Customs and Border Patrol through enacting them in public spaces, along with the exploration of our different relationships with privilege through interactive performances. We utilize this engagement with people in our communities to dynamically contrast what we were seeing presented singularly and problematically in the news. The next framework and intervention I would like to share is the one that led most directly to the race survey. At that time, we were holding a seminar session at the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego while the Dimensions of Black exhibition was up. The show was a survey of artworks by Black artists from the permanent collection and the first exhibition the museum named as having curated expressly along racial lines. A museum educator gave our students a tour and then presented them with a survey inquiring about their experience of the exhibit. Our binational group of students had a very challenged immediate response to the first question on the museum survey, which was, what is your race? Check the box. The San Diego-based students were very familiar with institutional demographic questions, but the Tijuana students were not. In fact, for all of them, it was the first time they had been asked to define their race, and they were upset by a process that forced a fixed definition that they felt did not match their lived reality. With half our group, shortly everyone became upset. And although the race and ethnicity categories presented were taken from the 2010 US Census, there was no way to check the box for the student with a black German father and Morena Mexican mother who grew up in Tijuana, that this student felt reflected her understanding of herself in this moment of defining her race for the first time. And as a group, we experienced the transformation of race and ethnicity as part of our ongoing experience together. We observed this in the way that many of us were understood as white or not white and how that whiteness was red changed weekly depending on which side of the US-Mexico border we were on. Our response to this feeling of being institutionally racialized was to create a demographic survey as an artwork. 
This poetic exploration of race survey reinterprets a mashup of questions from the 2010 U.S. and Mexican census forms. The U.S. Census is used here primarily because it is how the United States declares its official race categories. And because of this, it is one of the ways that our understandings and attitudes towards race are shaped. But who has declared what race in what year has changed throughout its existence? White was always named along with a tracing of the less than fully human category of black people can also be observed, as well as the category of Mexican shifting back and forth as white or not white several times. And in this history of the census, contingencies and relationalities of racial identities that are each time declared as fixed is disproven within its own archive. On our census, we use the word feeling as a further negotiator and specifier between the self and the race or ethnicity category on the blue section of our survey. I feel, for instance, white has the options of not at all, just a little, somewhat, moderately, quite a lot, or all the time, with a fill-in space to describe when and where you feel that way. And is paired with the follow-up question, other people describe me as white with the frequency scale and the follow-up question of when and where. Feelings are where we could locate and begin to discuss the challenges we had with our group's own shifting of racial identities, crossing the border, encountering the museum survey, and also against conversations we had with the Dimensions of Black exhibition, and our own considerations around how Blackness felt and read there. What is it to not feel brown, but read brown? When and how do we understand our felt racial identities? and that of others? Is it significant if it does not align with the general discourse? When, how, and in what ways? The Mexican government does not conduct ethnic censuses. Its national census consists primarily of class-based questions. So we use related class type questions from the Mexican census in the green section with a couple of other sections for further processing both class and race. April 20th, 2017, on the America Plaza trolley platform, we conducted the poetic exploration of race survey within the performative environment of our inflatable workshop dome. The participants were able to view a pamphlet explaining the survey and ask questions prior to committing to take it. Our lab coat wearing students attended the survey takers as they completed their surveys in silence. So who were these people? The light rail that passes through this location connects downtown San Diego directly to the San Ysidro port of entry. So the participants of the survey were an incredible cross-section of people who work downtown in a big range of capacities, commuting students and folks who were visiting the museum or on their way to the, a nearby restaurant, and as well as at least one member of our large homeless community. 100 surveys were collected that day, and all of them were later available to be viewed. To share three examples of responses, one person's range includes, I feel Hispanic, just a little, growing up in a border town implies a presence of two cultures. Others describe me as Hispanic somewhat when I was young and being biracial was rare. I feel Latina, just a little, when I spend time with my amazing in-laws. Others describe me as Latina somewhat when I disappear into the ambiguity of brown skin. I feel Spanish, not at all. I don't identify with the colonizers. I feel Mexican-American just a little with my first generation life partner bonding over shared experiences. I feel Chicana, not at all. I only have minor knowledge base of Chicana issues and history. This trend in seeing categories of race and ethnicity directly tied to a wide range of experiences with place, family, history, and cultural ideas was something that showed up frequently in participant responses. Another person described herself with these two indications. I feel white all the time, every day. Other people describe me as white every day. It seems to be my skin tone. While this is the standard notion about how race functions, 
it was actually rare in the way that people responded to our survey. And another example of environmentally determined race feelings I feel white somewhat at work when I speak in technical white collar finance terms. Others describe me as white somewhat when I am with friends who speak differently. I feel black, not at all. Others describe me as black just a little when they point out I am not white. Through an interdisciplinary collaboration with a political data analyst, we were able to employ the tools of public opinion surveys and see our participant responses as data. The patterns we found, we put in this infographic comparing US census race and ethnicity data about San Diego with 51% white people to 45% people of color and 4% unknown, as a contrast to our findings of 14% white people to 3% people of color and a new category of 83% mixed. White people in both data sets were those who indicated they feel white all of the time and nothing else. Also people of color for both sets indicated they felt a category other than white all of the time and nothing else. We added the third category of mixed for the poetic exploration of race survey, where mixed are not necessarily people of color, rather people who indicated they felt two or more categories, some to all of the time. And those percentages were signed and painted at the same location where the survey was conducted as part of the Who Designs Your Race mural on the MCA San Diego with the full hundred sentiment surveys on exhibit with all of the artwork produced via the transnational seminars. And at this time of physical distancing, the poetic exploration of race survey has been recrafted to be conducted non anonymously online to engage with our present day feelings about race in America. For 2020, 2021, our collaborating institution is a contemporary art museum, El Museo del Barrio in New York City, who commissioned this local San Diego Tijuana work to be recontextualized for Estamos Bien, their first triennial survey of Latinx contemporary art across the United States. The museum staff and curators became participating collaborators and they revised and determined the 38 race and ethnicity categories on the survey, reflecting their understanding of the primary audience they serve. This artwork consists of two parts as an icon infographic mural transcribing 50 of the initial 387 responses from the month between the end of the U.S. Census leading to the U.S. presidential election, as well as the ongoing online survey and its archive cataloging individual feelings about race by location. The infographic offers the ability to read and compare different perspectives and self-reflections about how people describe their feeling about their race. Perhaps in this work, there are beginnings of new conversations previously considered closed and insights to be gained. Initially, this project was created as an artwork to speak to what our binational group felt as racialization by our local cultural institution. This communication took the form of collaboration together with the art institution and as members of our wider communities directly to engage with current perceptions of race as identity and culture. The Poetic Exploration of Race Survey is an ongoing project now additionally engaged with this shared effort facilitating transparency in the way institutions define their audiences along the lines of race and ethnicity. I return to this image of these 38 U.S. race and ethnicity categories to conclude with some notes from the curators of the Latinx Triennial Essay. To offer a definition, Latinx the much contested term that expands on binary ex understandings of the U.S. Latino identity through the adoption of the gender neutral suffix X. Whether we use Hispanic, Latino, or Latinx, or whether people define themselves through the lens of nationality, lived experiences are at the center of how we define ourselves and the groups with which we identify most. Moreover, it is important to tackle and observe the various aspects of racism within the Latinx population, to observe how they are expressed in art, media, beauty standards, income, and many other spheres. 
embracing and centering Black, Indigenous, and queer epistemologies will lead to a richer understanding and broader representation of Latinx. With a spirit that echoes that call, I would like to invite you all to share your thoughts and feelings at theracesurvey.com. Thank you. This event was made possible by our sponsors LPA Design Studios and Doll Tile. Come celebrate Latin Heritage Month with us and explore our San Diego Diwana community through the lens of art, culture, and architectural design.